And uh, who are you? Hi, my name is Pramod Abhichandani and I'm the founder of Local Robo. So what do you do? I am a professor of robotics um, and I decided to start this company called Local Robo, which is an educational robotics company uh, late last year in 2014. So we're looking at an educational robot? Yes. So um, uh, what's, uh, there's some examples of uh, how they look look like? Yes. So if, if you, if you um, take a look at these robots, what we have done is we have created some little, you know, cute looking robots uh, that go into different uh, types of colors and, and mobility patterns, primarily with the understanding that we want students to learn about programming. So typically when I talk about programming in my classrooms, you know, there's a computer and we, we write code in front of the computer. Um, but sometimes it gets really boring and it's 2015 and we wanted to do something more meaningful so we decided to teach students programming through robotics uh, so the learning is twofold it's not only programming but it's also robotics so this looks like a really cool robot let's let's try it out what sure. can we show with it sure so i'll um I'll try to show you how this robot works. So first of all, so you have an app on iOS? Yes, that's we have an app on iOS and Android. Android. Uh, yes, um, and the idea here is that you know you connect to the robot. As you see, it's uh, it's once it connects, the LEDs are going to change colors. Uh, and um, we first introduce our little students, little kids, like or, or just beginners, uh, to the idea of the mobility of the robot. And there you have this joystick kind of. Um, sort of interface that we provide and you know you can move the robot forward backwards but this is just the starting point the more important thing this is a great uh, start yeah <laughs> thank you uh, is our graphical user interface um, you know once students get a, a look and feel of how the robot moves uh, the next thing you want to do is we want to create uh, we want to pipe them into the entire notion of, yeah. of um, programming so let's just say we have a test program that we build here okay uh, as soon as we get into the test program, you are presented with a blank slate. And what do you want to do now? Well, for the demo app here at CES, we are providing three options. Do you want the robot to move forward? Do you want the robot to move backwards? Uh, do you want it to move forward for two seconds? Um, let's say one second because it's really close to the edge. Uh, let's say this is one, one thing that you want to do. You hit play and the robot moves. Um, oh. Now. Uh, what this does is it, it provides a very algorithmic way of, of creating a particular behavior of the robot. So let's say you want the robot to move forward for one second and then you want it to wait for one second and, and then you want the robot to turn, um, let's say right for one second uh, and then you know you, we can create some sort of a sophisticated behavior just by adding these blocks. So this is just a basic program that I'm writing. Yeah. So once it's executing, this is cool. Um, what? And if you don't like a particular block, if you want to edit something, you just swipe, swipe the block out of place. You just keep on swiping it out of place. Now, what we have found is, you know, this really uh, catches on with the students. We have run summer camps with little kids, and we have run summer camps um, with with some middle school students, um, and we found that students really understand the concept of, you know, step-by-step uh, -step programming. And this is, once again, just the starting point. What we do after this is is where the real magic starts. It's our APIs. We have written English language-like APIs for Python, C, JavaScript, or Node.js, and MATLAB, which is a scientific software, uh, thereby providing a, a seamless sort of growth in the proficiency of programming skills for students. Um, we have something called the Local Robo Cloud Platform where each of these programs gets stored um, and so that students can uh, you know, um, come back to their programs and, and they, can, they can actually um, talk about you know, what they did, what, how they learned it. Um, and, um, and yeah, it's, it's just been a fantastic ride this far. So what kind of uh, sensors, what kind of things are in here? So this is a pretty feature-packed robot. It, it, it has an ultrasonic sensor, as you can see. Ultrasonic? Uh, yes, it is a distance sensor. It, it, it allows you to measure distances. Uh, it has a three degree of freedom accelerometer and a three degree of freedom, or three axis accelerometer and three axis gyroscope, providing six degrees of freedom worth of inertial measurement. Um, and, and that in itself provides a lot of capabilities of, um, of, of you know, creating a, a fantastic ground-based robotic 
platform uh, that allows you to um, to program different types of algorithms. This is a normal USB here for charging. Yes, this is a, this is a prototype version. Uh, uh, the new versions, the the final production versions, are going to have a micro USB. Um, Which is more popular. Uh, yes, <laughs> indeed. And what's this? Just uh, this to is just keep a it, caster, keep it. Yeah. Uh, Balance. Does it uh, sometimes tilt a little bit over or yes. something if you go very fast? Yes, we have designed uh, different types of motor speeds and we have different types of uh, sort of gearing ratios and power levels. Um, we, we found that you know when the robot does something wacky, students like like to work yeah. with it a lot more. Students enjoy, and so we have create, created a little instability in the mechanics just to provide that additional wow factor for students. To uh, like make it a fun, crazy thing. Yes. And uh, does Wi-Fi, Bluetooth? Uh, it it has Bluetooth low energy, so it works using Bluetooth. BT four, Bluetooth yes. four. Bluetooth so, um, how about students opening it up and adding stuff to it? Yes, and and uh, you know, once you open this up, you see what what the brains of this robot are, and you'll find that it's an Arduino powered robot. So one of the things that we have done. Uh, what kind it, of Arduino? Um, we, similar to one of those? Yes, uh, similar to the to the Leonardo. Leonardo. So it's the Atmega 32U4 Arduino that we have, uh, and the reason why we did, uh, did that is it's quite obvious. Arduino by far is one of the most popular uh, hardware prototyping platform and you know I use Arduino in my classes to teach engineering students how to program hardware and we want to tap into that community and we want to give the, the community a chance to work on this robot. It is a pretty open source design uh, and a lot of our software is going to be open source as well. So Atmo is pretty big with Arduino. Yes, Atmo is uh, is the company who is six Arduino. Power, uh, uh, this Arduino, kind yeah. of started it like that. Yes, absolutely, Atmel. absolutely. But this is not an ARM one. This is not ARM. This no, one, right? this is this is an AVR core, uh, which provides just the right amount of uh, horsepower that we have. Uh, by the way, a lot of the um, a lot of the algorithms that we, that we have embedded in this have actually germinated out of my PhD thesis or the co collective work that the robotics community has done as as research. So you know, a lot of careful programming has gone into uh, into creating a very well behaved robotic behavior. So what's your PhD? Uh, I have a degree in uh, electrical and computer engineering uh, and I work on the area of multi-ground vehicle autonomous control in urban environments. So the idea there is, you know, you have a Google car, uh, but five or seven years down the line you'll have multiple of these uh, unmanned vehicles uh, and, you know, when you have multiple of these unmanned vehicles, the transition is not going to happen overnight. You know, you're going to see uh, vehicles, uh, unmanned vehicles and, and uh, driver vehicles together in, 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 you know, your cities and urban infrastructure. And at that time, what kind of decision making do these unmanned vehicles need to make um, and need to perform in an algorithmic sense? That's what I f uh, focus on during my PhD work and, and subsequent to that. So here, the CS, the highlight or what I really have been trying to look for, but it's difficult to find is uh, robots that are autonomous. Right. I want a robot to follow me around. Yeah. I want flying robots to follow me around. Yeah. I want I want it all to just work and uh, like, you know, the uh, smart shopping cart in the yes. supermarket that follows you. A yeah. uh, robot at, in the home that, that, you know, does a bunch of things. This is, this has to be the cutting edge. This has to be what Apple, Google, all these guys should be like heavily investing in too. And then all the new guys, the new students, should be doing yeah, that. Yeah, in fact, as a matter of fact, you're right. We, we uh, as a community, we are closer to that goal than ever. As a roboticist, I can tell you that a lot of people, a lot of smart people, are spending sleepless nights trying to bring this vision that you're talking about to reality. And it's something that you are uh, you are bound to see in the next couple of years. But what what is what is the challenge right here? What is the main challenge? Is it just a bunch of cash to just sell these? Or is it uh, well, uh, robotics in some itself. crazy learning, uh, right. automatic learning stuff? That's a, that's a great question. And you know, I can talk about the, the technical challenges. But here's a simple example. If you just look at the, the open areas at CES, you look at the number of people that are, that are moving you know, to and fro from these booths. Um, and, and you realize that very few number of times people are colliding with each other. Uh, more often than not, people know how to navigate smartly through this 
craziness of, of, of so many people, uh, how to bring that kind of an intelligence into robots is, is a very hard problem. Uh, computationally, it's very complex. Uh, and even from a sensing perspective, even, even now, after all these amazing LiDAR technologies and mapping technologies that we have, um, you know, we are still getting to a point, we're finally rather getting to a point where, uh, where we are able to write smart algorithms that are computationally feasible. So there's uh, LiDAR, there's radars kind of things, and there is uh, infrared. Yeah. And uh, there's also crazy image uh, processing stuff. Yes. And video is showing some awesome ADAS stuff that, you know, recognizes street signs and people. And, yes. Uh, like the, the processors are getting so fast, you can do stuff just Absolutely. with cameras. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's the really exciting part about being a roboticist in today's day and age. You know, it's a great time to be in the field. And I, you know, despite the fact that now I'm a professor, I still have childlike uh, excitement every time I look at these amazing inventions and, and, and innovations. I like the, the, the company Google bought with the big robots they can kick and they stay standing. That kind of crazy... Uh, Boston th Dynamics. They yes. look yes. pretty cool. I yes. want to have one of those. <laughs> but it needs to be one or nine dollars within the next year yeah. or two. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We'll <laughs> so how old are your students? Um, well, uh, I, I teach undergraduate classes and graduate classes, so you know, freshmen and sophomore, or first year or second year students are, are these really young, 18 to 20 years old students, and then graduate students are the masters or the PhD level students, and they are usually, you know, in their mid 20s and, and uh, somewhere in that ballpark. So they are pretty uh, hardcore, crazy guys and girls that probably have big enthusiasm and ideas they want to yes robots are a cool thing to work in the thing about robotics is uh, you get to to make something cool and and much like our smartphones once you make something cool the magic is in the software it's a really exciting field to be in uh, and when you see something move by just you know just the way I showed you a local robo app something as simple as that can make a robot move it really instills a sense of uh, sort of pride in, in the designers and the engineers and yes we see a lot of girls and, and uh, boys just you know taking into the field of or diving into the field of robotics at a very young and age. And they're not going to take over they're just going to help us right? Absolutely. I, I, surely, I don't believe this taking over uh, thing. I, I definitely, they're friendly robots. <laughs> uh, I definitely believe that the robots that we are working on now and the ones that we are going to continue working on in the future will help us humans, humanity maximize its potential. So we might fall over one or two that like crosses our road by mistake, <laughs> but uh, it's just going to be mostly friendly stuff. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I think more positive than negative. Absolutely, there's always more good than bad here. <laughs>